Hi, I'm Anand from Raw Power and Live Food Education and today we have Battle of the Blenders. I've got six different blenders here and I wanted to test them out against each other. I've used all of them, they've all got their benefits, they're all good power blenders but they vary quite a lot in their stats and also in their price. First we'll be doing the CMAC VitaCrush 1500 Watt Blender. It's an automatic blender, it's a commercial blender. Um, it's all electronic, so no dial. It's either got high, medium or low. But what's really wonderful about this blender is it has um, settings on it, which I'll show you when I'm demonstrating it, that automatically feel the viscosity of what's in the blender jug and adjust the speed automatically. So if things are starting to get stuck on the sides, it will slow it down and speed it up. Pretty amazing. We've next got the CMAC VitaCrush 1390 watt, so it's a little less powerful. It's just automatic dials, it's not the automatic. So we've got uh, manual dials here. Uh, it's also a wonderful blender. We've got the Vitamix. Now the Vitamix has really been the standard for um, a long time in the raw food world. An incredibly good quality blender, very powerful. We've got the Sunbeam Cafe series. Now this is a, a fairly inexpensive blender that can be bought in department stores. It's rated at 1200 watts and you know as far as domestic blenders go it's probably one of the better ones. We'll talk about that later. I've got another CMAC here. It's a CMAC Mini, 1050 watt it's rated at. Also a very good power blender. And finally we've got the Power Mill which um, I've been promoting and using for about four years. We're rated at 950 watts. But what you're going to find out through this demonstration is that you can't always go on the wattage of a blender. Um, for some reason the reporting doesn't always reflect in the performance of the blender. So we're going to actually put these to the test today. I've cut some rather large chunks of pumpkin <laughs> that I bought at the farmer's market. This was one pumpkin believe it or not. And I'm going to fill each blender one at a time with pumpkin and just a little bit of water, maybe one or two cups. And I'm going to see how they handle them respectively. We're going to compare them. So we're going to start with the 1500 watt VitaCrush. Um, it's a commercial blender, but it's at a very good price. It's actually substantially, say, cheaper than the Vitamix. Um, it's more expensive than the Power Mill and the Sunbeam, but for its price, it's an incredible blender. It's actually the best blender I've ever used. And we'll see why in a moment. So this is really going to test this blender out, filling it up with pumpkin, big chunks of pu raw pumpkin. So if you're wanting to make a raw pumpkin soup or pun pumpkin pie, this is what you could do. All right, so I'm really going to put it through its paces and test this out by filling it right up. Hopefully I'll fit the lid on. So I've got some filtered water. I'm just going to add maybe two cups. That's about one. So this is really going to be tough on the blender. Okay, that's exactly two cups. So I'll just pop the lid on. All right, I think we're ready to go. I will, I'll just hit the 45 second button. We've got three timers here, 45 seconds, 75 and 105. I could put it on high, medium or low, but the beauty of this blender is it changes speed by itself, which you're going to see in a moment. So I've blended that for about 40 seconds and it seems to have done quite a good job. Let's just have a look at the consistency. It's very creamy. There's no lumps in there at all after 40 seconds of blending. So pretty impressive I would say. No tampers, no pushing, all by itself. Okay, so 
the 1500 did a pretty good job. Let's see how the 1390 goes. So this has got just manual dials on it. So I'm going to have to adjust the speed. I expect I'm going to have to help it a little bit um, because it doesn't change speed by itself. This also has a sound cover if you're wondering what this is. It, what it does is it blocks the sound coming from the blender jug. It doesn't really stop the, the sound coming from the motor. Personally, I get rid of it. I um, order one without it. This one did have a cover. I took it off. You can order them for about $100 less without the cover. And I recommend that. They don't, really don't stop the sound that much. So I'm going to fill this jug up. Now, also if we get stuck at any stage, we can also use the tamper. So, you know, down the middle to stir it around. I haven't tried this before. It's the first time that I've experimented with pumpkin in this blender. So let's see how we go. All right, so I'm going to start slow and then just go up to high speed and see how that works. We're not getting any traction with that. I'm going to have to help it clearly. So I'll just take that lid off and see if I can get that to work with the tamper. cut the chunks a little bit too big for this machine. I know it will handle pumpkin but I'm probably going to have to do it in a smaller quantity. So I'm just going to pour some out and just try doing it with a tamper and with less. Let's see how we go. I'll just leave the same amount of water in there. But we really are taking it to the limit putting this much pumpkin in a blender. So you can have the cover down if you want, but I find it doesn't, most of the noise is coming from the motor, not the jug anyway. So let's have a look at this. We do have double the water and probably less than half the pumpkin. So it's blended it nice and smooth, as you'd expect. I'll try adding some more pumpkin now to see if I can get it to do the rest of it. So if I broke it down into two lots, this one handle it okay. And it looks nice and smooth. Mmm, um, raw pumpkin, very nice actually, it's very sweet. Alright, so we've seen the difference between the two C-Max, the 1500, the 1380. The 1500 just ate it alive, unassisted. We had to help the, the 1380. Let's see how the, um, sorry, the 1390. Let's see how the um, Vitamix goes. It's a Vitamix 5200, it's a real quality machine has like seven year warranty. Um, the only reason we don't carry it is uh, the price. I think it's too expensive in Australia. It's about 200% more expensive than what you can get it for in America. And um, yeah, I'm, that doesn't sit so well with me. But as far as the machine goes, it is superb. And if you're wanting to, you know, you don't mind spending about a thousand bucks on a blender, a quality blender, you can get them from rawpleasure.com in Australia. So I'm gonna fill this up again with Pumpkin, that's two cups. Put the lid on. One thing I do like about the Vitamix is it's got a very incredible variable speed so you can go really slow with it, which is for some, um, some things it's quite advantageous. So I'm going to just put it on slow to start with. And then speed it up. 
Okay, it's struggling. I'm going to use try and pulse it to see if that'll help. Yeah, these chunks are just too big for it. So what I'm going to do is just take a few out. And I'll just move them around a little bit just to see if I can help it catch. And again, if you put in smaller chunks, this you know it would easily handle it. The Vitamix has got no trouble doing pumpkin. I'm just I'm just pushing the limit by putting in big chunks. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> That sounds great. I'm expecting not to find any lumps of pumpkin. No, that's beautiful. It's getting nice and smooth. All right, so the Vitamix um, is probably similar to, to the um, C-Mac Vitacrush 1390. Um, still, the clear winner is the C-Mac 1500. So now we're going to try a much less expensive blender. It is rated at 1200 watts. So, the Sunbeam Cafe series is also available in stores, you know, sort of electrical stores and things like that. It's um, only at the time of filming about $225 to $250. So, if you don't have the money for a more expensive blender, it is a decent option. I have owned a couple, they do tend to break um, if you overwork them, like you can in a raw food kitchen. So let's see how the Sunbeam Cafe Series handles the pumpkin. Not so well. So really what I'm testing here, it's not just the power of the motor, it's the ability of the motor to handle big chunks of something heavy and hard like pumpkin. And once these blenders get started, all of them will actually blend pumpkin. But I just wanted to push the envelope and see what was possible, you know, with, in regard to size of pumpkin. All right, so I'll do that. Just give it a bit of a, move it around a bit, see if that helps. Let's try that again. like it's done qu quite a good job yeah quite smooth so again if I put in less and you know obviously double the water I didn't take any water out it can handle it mm, probably not quite as smooth as the other ones but if you wanted to make a raw pumpkin soup you can do it with this just probably cut them smaller all right so now we've tried these four blenders we've done the, the 1500 C-Mac Vita Crush the 1390 C-Mac Vita Crush the, um, I think it's a 1380 watt um, Vitamix 5200, the 1200 watt um, Sunbeam Cafe series. So now we're going to try another C-Mac Vitacrush, but this is the 1150 Mini. So this experiment isn't super scientific, but it just gives us a rough idea that basically so far all these blenders can handle pumpkin if it's cut small enough. Again, I'll start slow and speed up. Alright, so like these other, th well, other three blenders, we're getting stuck. And possibly I'm going to have to empty some out. I'll, it felt like it was catching to begin with, so maybe if I just give it a little poke, maybe we'll be able to get it going. We'll try, try that. This is, by the way, the most economical of all these blenders. At the time of filming, it's sort of around $450 at rawpower.com. So if you're looking for a um, good quality power blender, the C-Mac Mini is a very good choice. All right, so here we go again.
So, interestingly, this CMAC Mini, which is only rated at, at 1050, which is still very powerful watts, um, cut the, the pumpkin up better than this um, Sunbeam or the Vitamix. So, I'm not saying it's a better blender, but in this particular experiment, which I've actually done twice, this one has come out on top for chopping large chunks of pumpkin over these two. Alright, so we're down to the power mill, which is uh, a blender we've been offering for quite a long time. It's also um, been rated at 950 watts, but it goes up to 1380 watts. I don't quite ex understand the, you know, when it peaks. I don't quite understand how they rate all of these, but obviously it's not quite accurate when it comes to real life. So let's see how the power mill fares with some big lumps of pumpkin. So again, unlike the CMAC 1500, it didn't just pull it down on its own. I'll see if I can just, you know, change the speed a bit and get it to draw down. Well that was a surprise too because it is rated as probably the least out of all of these as wattage but this performed very well, probably equally as well as the um, 1050 CMAC, the power mill did and um, probably better than the Sunbeam Cafe series and the um, Vitamix but obviously not as well as the 1500 watt CMAC or the 1380 watt CMAC I think was also pipped it. So I'll just check it for consistency very smooth. Um, so there you have it, that's the pumpkin test. This isn't by any means a comprehensive test of which is the best, best blender. It just shows which blenders handle large lumps of pumpkin the best. Um, they're all very good blenders. I'm personally, personally very um, pleased particularly to have, be able to offer the CMAC blenders. Um, the CMACs you know, are wonderful on price. They have a two year warranty, so we're not comparing with the seven years on the, on the Vitamix, but they seem like a very solid construction. And um, yeah, the price is great. But you can get yourself a, a 1500 watt CMAC for around $200 less than what you'd pay, say, for the top, the top brand of um, Vitamix. Um, and at the other end, for $450 at the time of this video, you can get the CMAC uh, Mini uh, Vita Crush. And that's a very affordable power blender and as you can see it'll make raw pumpkin soup using big lumps, make it nice and pureed. So hopefully I haven't confused you there. Um, I thought it was just a lot of fun to do this experiment. I'll do it again but we'll, we'll test it for different things in future videos. Today was pumpkin soup, we'll try grinding, we'll try a few other applications that are commonly used in a raw food kitchen. So um, if you have any questions just contact me at rawpower.com.au and I'll be very happy to help you. Have a beautiful day.